Good day, everyone, and thanks for joining me here so I can reveal our next incredible musician for Genesis Retouched. Mike Rutherford was a founding member of the band Genesis along with Tony Banks, Peter Gabriel, and Anthony Phillips. While his contributions have mainly been focused on bass work, especially during the early years, he had quite an impact on guitar as well, playing many of the 12-string parts in the early Gabriel era, as well as various guitar parts after the departure of Steve Hackett. So the gentleman chosen to perform in this capacity needed to have the ability to handle many of these parts when necessary. The gentleman who agreed to join us is one of the most in-demand musicians around the Midwest, both for his abilities live as well as in the recording studio. He has performed and recorded for Walfredo Reyes Jr., Sam Blakesley, David McGlynn, and many others. He also writes and records and plays alongside Devin Lay and Spherical Agenda. I am very thrilled to introduce Matt Wiles. Matt, thanks for joining me. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Matt, I've had the pleasure of meeting you and working together for the better part of 15 months with a couple of others under the name of Starcastle. That project sadly imploded thanks to a very strange set of circumstances, but it allowed the two of us to become friends and musical acquaintances, which led me to asking you if you might have an interest in doing this project. To be quite frank, there was a part of me that said that you wouldn't be interested because of all the other things that you do. But to my surprise, you didn't even hesitate to get involved. Um, tell me your thoughts about the project when you heard it and why you decided to come on board. I knew immediately it would be fun, first of all, like right at, right out of the gate. You say, hey, you want to, whatever it is, like, hey, like, here's a cool bunch of music. You want to play it? Like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so I knew it's like, well, you have a team of people who are all going to, who you can all trust. If they say, okay, I can do this, they will deliver this. And if they can't, they'll tell you they can't. It's like if the five of us just plan out and commit to such and such dates and commitments and do the homework, it's like this is going to exist. And so far it does. <laughs> right? There you go. Right. You know, we played, it's been several weeks at this point, but coming in, just like, it's pretty ambitious to say, hey, let's learn a set of like prog pop music, an entire set, and get together for the first time and just play it. And we kind of did well you know, i said that uh, you know seven out of the 12 songs we could have probably played nobody would have known it was our first time together right? you know if yeah if you were in a cover band it was enough to where like if if you had somebody really quick said let's play such and such in a set like totally uh so after we did that it's like oh yeah it's like as long as i know the songs when i come in it's gonna be okay so one of the cool things about the project is you'll be bringing your own set of bass pedals which is really one of the unique sounds of Genesis material, especially live when they shake the rafters of the venues in which they play. Tell me about your uh, bass pedal setup. They, Moog makes the Minotaur module, a little guy, like a, it's like an analog dual oscillator synth module. It's about this big. Um, and Roland used to make the PK-5, which is like an, it's like an octave worth of like organ style pedals, you know, Taurus-like, you know, the long, you know, kind of piano looking, but C to C, just an octave. And yeah, they, they used to make a MIDI controller in that format. And it's well built, you know, Roland, especially older Roland stuff. It's in like a nice aluminum casing. It's really, really roadworthy, really sturdy for something that you have to be stepping on <laughs> all night. Uh, but yeah, just that in a MIDI cable. And I'm getting, especially when you hook up to, you know, a nice PA, especially when I record it, or you hook up to a nice PA system, it... You press the button and everyone's head turns. They said, "There's that's a Taurus. <laughs> that's the one." <laughs> so they did. Moog did a good job. Again, it's not. I'm sure a lot of people would would argue in ways is, it's not like the exact same. But you know, if something happens, it's also like serviceable and replaceable, and it's actually portable. Like it's actually with a good case. It's it's like road road ready. So you'll be focusing on bass for the majority of the material we're doing, but there's a few songs, uh, Turn It On Again, Dance on a Volcano, and The Carpet Crawlers, that you'll be doing some guitar work. Are you finding any unique challenges when dealing with that? Yeah, I'm fortunate so far that the the guitar needs from me aren't like incredibly like technically demanding. So that's... Happy, I'm happy about that because I'm not a guitar player. <laughs> it's, and fortunately, that's I'm glad. Like we have a fun arrangement. You know, Clark is a guitar player. Our, you know, um, I know he'll have a video coming soon. But uh, just from the get go, there was like an initial. He's like, I heard you're a bass player. 
I said, yes, I play the bass. You play the guitar. He's like, so let's do that as much as we can. And um, so, yeah, so there's no trading because, you know, you go watch the concerts and a bunch of these lines, you know, it's, it's it. I'd say mostly Mike Rutherford is who people think of, but depending on the era and the album and the show, sometimes it was like borderline half and half or maybe like 60, 40. Like Daryl played a lot of bass, a lot of really good bass, especially on like the, um, like, like Land of Confusion, some of, or I can't remember exactly which ones in, he's on. I think he plays uh, Invisible Touch. Yeah. If I remember right. And that line, you know, I love that. And he plays like a bunch of those songs too. Um, oh, he plays Abacab as well, you know. So he's got like this super good, he's got a really, really nice, they both have a great pocket, but they each have like a, they each have like a unique way they feel as bass players. They're both really good. But yeah, like Daryl, I like really like Daryl's pocket thing he has going on. I I, I really like his bass playing a lot too. Um, but yeah, the guitar stuff, where it's like turn it on again, I get to just chug fifths which is great for me. I don't have to, that's not like a big, it's kind of like playing bass, but on the guitar. Mm. So that's nice. And I think I'll have some other kind of arpeggio chordy bits. I have to play while Clark does like swelling, swelling stuff. Um, I'll be getting that into that in the coming weeks so we can play it together. You know, I still, fortunately Clark's been at it and he gave me a heads up. So that's kind of, it's kind of nice to know. It's like, oh, I have guitar here and I have guitar here. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much. Matt is number four of the five-member musical team I've assembled for this project, and I've got one more to reveal next week. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell so you can be informed when we release more content, and stand by for announcements when they become available. Hope to have something coming up really, really soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.